Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. You guys up there, give me a little more sound. I'm gonna need some help this morning. <clears throat> Thank you, Cameron. Thank you. That's better. Good morning. And happy Sunday morning to each and every one of you. Um, as always, I pray that you all are as, just as excited as I am to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And we serve such a good and gracious God. And he allowed us to live to see one more day, and that was not guaranteed to us. But he blessed us nonetheless. And so I just say, thank you, Lord, for one more day. Amen. Amen. We welcome the Holy Spirit's presence in this place. And our prayer is that he would have his way. And that before this day is done, he would know that one, we praise and worship him. We honor him. We trust him. And we call on him today. I just praise God for this day, for this day and this time. This morning's inspirational scripture comes from the book of Hebrews, the 13th chapter and the 8th verse. Hebrews, the 13th chapter and the 8th verse. <clears throat> and it reads, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen. Amen. That scripture, it touched my heart probably halfway through this past week. And I just thought about the fact that he's done so many great things for us on yesterday that he will certainly continue to do those things today and tomorrow. So whenever, whenever we're feeling discouraged in the least, please think on the blessings of yesterday. The many prayers that we've offered up that he's answered, the many things he's done for us, how he kept us, how it was times that we didn't know how we were going to make it, but he brought us through it. And that in and of itself should encourage us to be able to just keep on keeping on. Amen. 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 I praise God that he is the same. Oh. And we change, but he does not. And thank you. Thank you, Lord. He never changes. Amen and amen. Please stand with me as we pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Certainly, on this day, all of you are welcome in this place. It does my heart joy to see your smiling faces. For those of you that are at home or afar, know that you are welcome in this service on today. Welcome to church. We are so glad that you're here. And we want you to know that when you walk through our doors today, you didn't just walk into a building. You walked into a family. And regardless of who you are, where you came from, or what you look like, you are welcome here. Because at this church, we believe that God is love. And that He is in the business of rekindling lost passions, restoring broken dreams, and filling empty lives. At this church, we believe that life in Christ is not a formula 
of rules and laws. But a moment by moment relationship with Jesus. And His love is infinite and everlasting. Without pretense or conditions or discrimination. At this church, we can't stand religion. But we love God. And if you're not quite sure what the difference is yet, we can't wait to show you. We're glad you joined us today. Welcome to church. Amen. Welcome to church. Welcome to church. It is now time for this morning's announcements. This coming Sunday, December 17th, will be our Christmas sweater slash cookie Sunday. My suggestion is yes, please bring your cookies, wear your sweaters, but also bring a container or two. Because I'm figuring if all of us bring cookies, it's going to be cookies galore and we will need to gather up whatever's left and take them with us. So feel free to bring a, a baggie, a container, or something so that you can snap up the cookie of your choosing. Uh, we are also asking that we would be a blessing to those who are less fortunate than us, and that we would also bring unwrapped gifts of hats, gloves, and scarves for the needy. Uh, you can bring them in in whatever kind of bag you have them in, sit them under the Christmas tree. I will gather them up and make sure that they reach those individuals who stand most in need of some winter garments. Certainly, you can always use hat, gloves, and scarves. And I just don't want us to do anything here for ourselves without thinking about other people. And that's what ministry is all about. And my prayer is that my spirit would become your spirit. And whenever we go to do something, we're always thinking about who else we can bless other than just ourselves. Amen. Amen. Our Christmas Eve candlelight service will take place on Christmas Eve, Sunday, December 24th, in our 10.30 a.m. worship service. So please plan to attend at 10.30, and we will not be having the 7 o'clock candlelight service. We will light our candles and sing our carols during that 10.30 worship service. It may be just a tad bit longer than our services normally would be, but certainly we will continue to worship him in the tradition we've always had of worshiping uh, through the candlelight service. Amen? Amen. Speaking of those candlelights, thank you to the IT team who's all over it up there. I forgot to light our Advent candle for this morning, so let's do that. On today, we are focusing on peace. We're focusing on peace. On last week, our focus was on hope. But today, we light these candles with the thought of peace. Oh, my goodness. We certainly need peace at this point in time in this world. And so on this second Sunday of Advent, let's focus on peace in this world. Amen. 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 On Saturdays, we continue to hold our praise and worship services at 3 o'clock p.m. We welcome you to come out and experience our praise and worship service for yourself and see if it's something that you may want to uh, participate in on a weekly basis or even do one service Saturday, one service Sunday, or do them both. Uh, certainly, I do not preach the same sermonic message on Saturdays and Sundays. I do know that some of you watch the Saturday service and thank you for that. Um, but certainly if you, and so you know that I don't preach the same message both days. But we also welcome any of you who may not be aware to certainly come in and participate with us in the praise and worship service. 
uh, we are continuing to pray and praise for church successes. During this season, lots of events are going on at many churches, so there's plenty for us to praise God for and certainly offer up prayers for all churches, including our own. This month for AVAC, we are giving paper products paper products. Those of you that are at home uh, know that you can just give a dollar amount and we'll go out and make sure that those paper products are purchased in your name, that other individuals may be able to be blessed from those products. Please join me in the singing of a musical selection.
Amen, amen. If you're a part of our Bible class, you got all of that. Um, certainly, we have been studying the names of God and the importance of being able to call him by name. Amen. It is now time for our responsive reading. This morning's responsive reading is number 676 in the back of your hymnals. 676. Good morning. And he believed the Lord, and he reckoned it to him as righteousness. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed through faith for faith. As it is written, he who through faith is righteous shall live. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks for those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by works of the law, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as an explanation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies him who has faith in Jesus. The promise to Abraham and his descendants that they should inherit the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Then as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one man's act of righteousness leads to acquittal and life for all men. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. Law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved. I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but it is not enlightened. For being ignorant of the righteousness that comes from God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law that everyone who has faith may be justified. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. We certainly praise God for his word and for the reading of his word. It is now time for our offertory period. Uh, again, as always, trays will be passed for those that are in the sanctuary. Uh, but you do have the option to give through our electronic giving format. And we invite those of you near and far to give through our electronic giving format as well. You can access it from our, face, our website, uh, firstbaptisttorenum.com, uh, or you can go directly to tithe.ly.com. 
com, look up First Baptist Church of Tarentum, and we will certainly receive your gifts. It's always an option to drop them off or mail them in uh, for our receiving. We certainly thank God for all of the givers. It is now time for our offertory hymn. This morning's offertory hymn is number 133 in your hymnals. 133 in your hymnals. Hark the herald angels sing. Please stand with us for the singing of this morning's hymn. seated. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you praise on high because you are so very, very worthy. And on this day, we ask your prayers over every offering that has been given, whether in this place, electronically, they're going to be dropped off later. We just say thank you. And we thank you for touching the hearts of people and that indeed they may be givers unto you. Heavenly Father, we pray wisdom on today. In wisdom that First Baptist Church of Tarentum, the stewards that you have placed over these gifts, that indeed we would use them to the uplifting and upbuilding of your kingdom. Heavenly Father, that we would be the legs, the feet, the arms that belong to you and you alone, that we would accomplish some good in this community and that we would be, continue to be able to be a blessing to others. And we lift you up and just say thank you. Multiply the blessings for these people. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. It is now time for our joys and concerns. Let me go through my list first. We're praying for the family of Jesse Caldwell, including Je Jackie Sanders back in Detroit, 
uh, the passing of Jesse Caldwell, her mother. We're praying for Amber and Ronnell Booker and family and the passing of their grandfather. We're continuing to pray for Scott Polly as he recovers from emergency surgery. We're praying for Peg Clink, who's had a couple of falls, and we're so glad to see her today. And certainly, we are lifting you up in prayer. Please know that. Uh, we're praying over Terry's class that she was training. They are now out in the real world, and so we're praying that they will successfully complete their on-the-job training. We're praying for my aunt, Edwina Ivy. We're praying for Lynn Harris, a, a individual that we encountered last week who uh, is living in a housing crisis. So we lift her up. Uh, we're praying for the homeless and any who may be living in a housing crisis. Uh, we pray for Ariel and Jackson on today. We're lifting up Gloria Palmer and her husband. We're praying for Shirley, which is uh, Lynn neighbor who took a, a bad fall last week. We're continuing to pray for Judy's brother, uh, her nephew, Jamie, as well. Uh, we're continuing to pray for Todd and the wife and family of Johnny. Uh, we are praying for peace in the Middle East. We're praying for those who were negatively affected by the storms that went through Tennessee on last night. And then we are praying for those who uh, either have cancer or are fighting cancer or who are family members or friends of individuals who are being affected by cancer. This past Tuesday, the list just seemed to get longer and longer. And we just finally said, we need to be praying for those who are in any way impacted uh, through this terrible, terrible disease of cancer. We're certainly praying for Mildred Boston, who has cancer, for <clears throat> Lucy, who is uh, Sam's aunt, in, not our Sam, but another Sam, uh, in Peru. Uh, we're continuing to pray for Adam Butler, our IT person, his mother. We're praying for Stephen. We're praying for Jeff, our neighbor, who when you see him out there, just yell hello because he is certainly uh, in a battle. He, uh, the cancer is in his bones. Uh, he has gone through lots of treatment. He is now doing radiation. Um, and so we just need to keep him in our prayers. We're praying for John Martin as well, who has been in a lengthy battle. Uh, that's Ed's brother. And also, it is my heart's desire that you would add my mother, Patricia Daniel, to your list um, very late in the day on Thursday. And we received notice that she does have cancer. And so my prayer is that you all would please keep her in your prayers. Uh, be prayerful. I'm going to tell you what to pray for. First and foremost, that is caught early. Um, that is our prayer as she is just beginning this journey, and there are so many unanswered questions. So please pray that it would be an early stage diagnosis, that it would be something that can be removed, uh, and that she would return to the strength that she has even today, in that she does not uh, and is not showing any signs of cancer. So certainly, um, if you love me at all, please pray for my mother. Uh, that's, that's what I need from you all. So you keep Patricia Daniel uh, on your list, um, and I greatly would appreciate that. Thank you. I have a prayer request. Um, you, you might even know him, Ray Santai. He um, has Bonway Auto on 908. Um, he was almost cancer free. They removed one of his kidneys, and it was like a month, and they detected cancer in his other kidney or some tumors, and they're going to have to remove that, and then he's going to have to be cancer free for a while before they, he can even think about getting a kidney transplant. Um, 
he really has a strong faith um, and he his spirits seem really good but I, he needs prayer amen Um, I have some three of very good friends of mine that have been having really terrible health issues. Two of them since 20, March of 2020, having had COVID, they've had nothing but health issues since. And the third one is my daughter's boyfriend's mother is going through a really bad time and it's not looking good for her. So please keep her in her prayers. We sure will. So I have a joy. Um, Maddie got a, a, approved for a new job. So um, it's a daylight, Monday through Friday job, no more weekends, no more holidays, no more overnights. So she'll be able to be home more with the girls. Amen. And I have a, a prayer request that we pray for my nephew, Zachary. Um, he's been battling some addiction issues and he was supposed to come up yesterday and he never made it and unfortunately this isn't the first time that that has happened and I'm just I'm very concerned of um, some fallout coming soon Amen. Amen. one unspoken three unspoken for two unspoken, please. Dr. Brock, uh, we have, I know, I, I've asked quite a bit about the little boy that we know that's been in and out of children's he is back in children's. He is in ICU. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what all they're going to do for him this time, but I mean, this little boy has gone through a lot in and out of the hospital and with tubes and IVs and everything else. And he's what, six, seven years old. Mm -hmm. So please keep him in your prayers. We certainly will. Amen. I mentioned the revival going on in Nicaragua. There's only six million people in that whole country. So far, one, one million has been evangelized. And they're planning 12 services for next year. They expect the whole country to be evangelized. People are walking out of their wheelchairs Deaf people are hearing, blind people are seeing. It's just a wonderful revival going on down there. Then I heard about this man's testimony. He was born by artificial insemination to two lesbian women, his mothers. And uh, at about nine years old, he had a call to go to church. And uh, one of his mothers would drive him faithfully to church, never go in, but take him to church. He's holding revivals now all over the coast of California. You name a city, he's had an outdoor revival there. So keep praying for that. And uh, speaking of your mother, we all got to pray for your mother because without her, we wouldn't have a pastor. <laughs> so I heard about uh, these two mice that went to heaven. And St. Peter said, you guys are so little. I'm going to give you skateboards because heaven is so big and you're so little. So shortly after that, a cat came up to heaven, a good holy cat, you know, some of them are. And uh, so, oh, about six months later, he seen the cat and he says, oh, how do you love heaven? And the cat says, I love it, it's just wonderful up here. But what I like the most up here is those meals on wheels. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. Uh, we appreciate you. 
a quick word or oh, a quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, you heard every name that was mentioned, every joy that we're experiencing, every unspoken, you know what they are. And we just pray that you would allow your will to be done in and through it all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Please join me in the singing of a musical selection. Every gesture of your hand Waves of fear Collapse your command I know tomorrow When the pressure rushes in You'll be there To rescue me again
what a mighty God we serve. It is now time for our sermonic message. This morning's sermonic message comes from the 23rd number of Psalm. And it reads, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. Amen. A quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, allow this message to be a blessing to these, your people, in the way that it has already been a blessing unto me. Amen and amen. Uh, the subject of this morning's sermonic message, still waters, still waters. And this psalm uh, provides all who hear or read it with comfort. And that's likely why it's one of the most well-known psalms. And nearly all of us know the King James Version from memory. This psalm indeed deserves its notoriety. And most of you know that it's been my favorite of late. And that's why I was so pleasantly surprised when it came up in my preaching schedule. I know that it may seem untrue, but I really do not pick and choose these sermonic texts and topics a week or two before I deliver the message. They are chosen a year in advance. I find it amazing that last December, the Holy Spirit knew that I, and I'm going to make this one personal, that I would need to hear a message from the 23rd number of Psalms on this day and at this time, and that I would have been dwelling on the Lord as my shepherd and all that seeing him as such would mean in my life today. So that just goes to show all of us, the pastor is not intentionally choosing scripture texts and topics because she knows what's specifically happening in all of our lives. But just like you, it really does feel like the pastor is peeking in my window. And somehow, the pastor just seems to know exactly what I'm feeling and what's happening in my world. Well. For me, it is a little different, and I admit that because I am the pastor. Presumably, I know exactly what I'm feeling and what's happening in my world. But what I've come to understand is that God knows so much more about me than I could ever know. So on today, I praise God for ministering to all of us from this 23rd number of song. And my prayer is that it will bring us comfort no matter the trial we're facing. So my prayer today is for those of us that are tired, please give us rest. For those of us that are in darkness, please give us light. For those of us that are facing enemies, please give us your anointing. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right path for his name's sake. Just hearing these words should instantly cause us to be at peace. Yeah, at peace. Because the Lord is our shepherd. And for that reason, there is nothing in this life that should be able to interfere with our joy. 
please recognize that I used the word should, and that was intentional. Intentional because we are all humans, and depending on what's going on in our lives, our humanness allows us to be thrown off, so to speak. And we begin to think the worst, and we become sad beyond measure, and we behave in a manner that does not demonstrate our walk in God. Please see that when our response to life's challenges is wrapped up in our humanness, we are not living in faith. Believe me, this message is as much for me and my family as for any of you. We all need to check our faith meters and determine whether our faith is on full, empty, or somewhere in between. And please be honest with ourselves. And, and when, and I did say when because it will happen, if we find that our faith tanks are not full, allow the fact that our shepherd has declared that as long as we follow him, we shall not want. Now, I'm sure we all see that I added a few words to what the text says, but let me explain why. A shepherd is only a shepherd when we follow. Think about it. A shepherd is not a shepherd if he or she walks along with no sheep following. I've heard this said before. If no one is following, the person is just on a very long walk. <laughs> so allow the words that are not in this text. It's certainly, certainly implied that our shepherd is our shepherd because we follow him. It's a wonderful thing to know that as we follow him, we can depend on him to take care of us. And that's his job, <laughs> to make sure that all of the sheep have everything that we need. So indeed, as long as we follow him, we shall not want. Now, I know that sometimes it seems that life just keeps throwing punch after punch, each landing on our hearts and in our minds. You know what I mean. It's like thing after thing happens in our lives. It seems that we barely have time to recover from one crisis before another one arises. If any of us are not sharing in this experience right now, please put this message on a shelf because all of us have our times. And my prayer is that we will be equipped to handle life's punches when they're thrown. Now, a natural result of battling through punch after punch is that we get tired. And we feel like we can't take much more. I know that I have felt that way. And we feel like giving up. I know that I have felt that way. If we feel like things will never get better, I know that I have felt that way, <laughs> but not today, huh? Allow me to say that again, devil, not today. I stand before us able to say not today because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He is our Jehovah Jireh, he is our provider. It's nothing that I've done. It's not because I'm the pastor. It's not because I can somehow predict the future. It is because I trust God. Hmm. I pray that all of us can make this same declaration, not today. Ah. In spite of the fact that we have done nothing to deserve his care, not today. <laughs> In spite of the fact that we don't know what the future may hold, not today. In spite of our humanness, not today. Please walk away from this message with not today in our spirits. I know, I know sometimes we feel so, so tired. It seems like the many punches that are hitting us have taken their toll. And like any punching bag, we are starting to split at the seams, tear, and what's on the inside is starting to spill out. But know this, our shepherd knew that sometimes we would tire. So he already put a plan in place for that. 
He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Oh, how personal is this psalm. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, mama, when we find ourselves knee deep in our tiredness, reflect on the fact that he makes us to lie down in green pastures. He provides us a time and a place to rest, a time and place to be helpless. And he provides us a time and a place to let our guards down. <laughs> green pastures. This is the place that our shepherd leads us. Thank you, Lord, for the fresh, tender, grassy pastures, for the places of rest that only you can provide. Still tired? <laughs> and know that he leads me beside still waters. In other words, if we would allow him to, he will bless us with peace. He is our Jehovah Shalom. He is our peace. Yes, there is something truly beautiful about still waters, the waters that move but move ever so slightly. It gives us an opportunity to enjoy the beauty while having no concern that the water will in any way harm us. Revelations, the seventh chapter and 17th verse says, for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. As he leads and guides us beside the still waters, the water of life, know that he, not us, but he is wiping away every tear from our eyes. <laughs> so go ahead and cry. That's natural when we're being hit with punches for the pain to overwhelm us, for tears to, to fall. But also know that God is right there wiping. That's why there's peace when we are besides the still waters. Still tired? <laughs> and know that he restores my soul. Yes, our shepherd makes us as good as new. And no, that doesn't mean that we will ever be young children again. But it does mean that he will take away the hurt and pain that we are experiencing. And he will bless us with the strength that we need to keep moving forward. <laughs> Allow me to repeat that. He will bless us with the strength that we need to keep moving forward. And only after we've rested and our tears are dried and we are strengthened, will he lead me in the right path for his name's sake. Devil, <laughs> not today. <laughs> as individuals, as a church family, as children of God, we're rested. Our tears are dried, we are strengthened, and we are ready to keep walking. <laughs> As I walk through this journey with my mother, from time to time, please remind me not today, huh? And I will do the same for you. I'm gonna do my best to finish this text in a timely manner, so I must, must hurry along. Please hold on and let's do our best to keep up. Also, we can always re-watch this message from our Facebook page, website, or YouTube. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Not only do punches thrown and landed sometimes cause our faith to be shaken, so does being in the dark. And I use that term literally and figuratively. In this life, there are times when we are literally in the dark. And whether it's a physical blindness, or whether it's a natural blindness like the dark of night, or whether it's a self-inflicted blindness where we isolate ourselves, and literal darkness is real. But so is figurative darkness. I think that we're all intimately familiar with this form of darkness. It's the darkness that comes when we cannot see where we are going in life when we cannot see how things are going to work out, or even when we cannot see the value in trusting God. 
I have experienced multiple periods of darkness, and I'm sure you have too. But I, allow me to shout again, devil, <laughs> not today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are not required to live our lives in darkness. No matter what the devil would have us to believe, we are not required to live our lives in darkness. I know sometimes it feels like it, but we are not. Better yet, during dark times, we must know that they will pass and that there's no need for us to be fearful. And there's one reason for this. We have a shepherd whose job is to make sure that we're okay. <laughs> Even when it's dark and we cannot see, he continues to lead us. He continues to guide us. He continues to direct us. And all we need to do is follow him. I pray that we're all getting this theme this morning. And the way to make it through this life is to follow the shepherd. He is the source of our peace, for you are with me. It's so great to know that no matter what is happening in our lives, he is with us. I'm just so grateful that he is with me and my mom. I'm just so grateful that he is with each of you. I'm just so grateful that he is with First Baptist Tarentum. Because as long as he is with us, we indeed have nothing to fear. That doesn't mean that everything will go exactly how we want it to. But it does mean that the shepherd is watching and he is willing and able to walk with us as we travel this road called life. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. As he walks with us, he has his rod. We have no idea what his rod looks like, but we do know that the rod is his weapon. He uses it to defend us when we're under attack, my God. He uses his rod to defend us when we're under attack. Thank you, Lord, for defending us. And never forget, he is fighting on our behalf. We've heard it said before, the battle is not ours, it's the Lord's. He is our Jehovah Nisi. He fights our battles. Ha. We need him in the here and now. Our shepherd also carries a staff as he leads us. And he uses it even in the darkness to keep us on the correct path. And we may not know which way to go, but he does. And he uses the staff whenever we begin to wander. So when we feel God guiding us, although it may be dark and we have no idea where he's taking us, although it may be that we just have no idea what's getting ready to happen, follow, huh? Follow. He always has our best interest at heart, and he will protect us. In that, we should be comforted. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. First and foremost, please know that the devil is our enemy. He alone. Now, he uses people, places, and things to attack us. But behind it all is him. So let's do our best to not blame the people, places, and or things that are attacking us. And just recognize that the devil is behind it all. And that's why I requested time and time again, especially during our Bible class, Joys and Concerns, for prayer for my family. Oh, hmm. huh, I know who the true enemy is, and he will do whatever it takes to move me out of the way. He doesn't like me to bring God-led messages that help strengthen the body of Christ. He doesn't like me to pray for all of you. He doesn't like me to minister to the homeless, marginalized, and or disadvantaged. For that reason, I will be under attack. But please know that I'm not alone. I've asked that we pray for one another because all who are growing spiritually are subject to attack. Because all who are standing firm on God's word are subject to attack. And all who are busy in ministry are subject to attack. But again, do not fear. 
because the anointing of God is upon us. <laughs> and let me quickly explain. You anoint my head with oil. Anoint is to place upon us. So our shepherd places something upon us that is guaranteed to help us as we follow him. The something is oil. Now each of us need to understand that the oil is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> what a blessing that is. Our shepherd placed the Holy Spirit upon us. This means that the comforter that Jesus sent is with us every step we take. I must close, I must close. He provides for us right in front of our enemy. And because of his anointing, our cup overflows. We have more than enough. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with peace, even in the presence of our enemy. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And please join me in declaring that we will never give up on him and we will continue to trust him and we will continue to work for him and we will continue to follow him Lord please hear me ah, I will continue oh mm. for today I need him to be Jehovah Rapha. He is our healer. Know that our shepherd will be whoever we need him to be. Call his name and may the peace of steel waters be with us all. Amen and amen. I just praise God for the Holy Spirit for the word of God, for this message from God, as it encourages all of us, I pray. There may be some who don't know Jesus as Savior, and certainly and assuredly, I would be remiss if I didn't introduce him. He is the Son of God, and he died on the cross for your sins and for mine. In my prayer, is that you would believe that and come to know for yourselves that he rose again from the dead and he has all power in his hands. If you don't know him and you've never confessed it, please reach out to me that I might be able to help lead you to a place of salvation. And certainly, I am going to talk about First Baptist Church of Tarentum who are a truly great group of people that are ready to provide care, concern, compassion, and love for any who would allow us to. I just thank God in advance for what he's doing and what he will do in the months, weeks, and years to come. Amen and amen. Please join me for the singing of our final selection. Heart singing hallelujah. 
stand up. We're going home. We're going home. I can't talk about the Steelers because they already lost. So we're ahead of the game from Thursday to today. And, and we all see why Trebinsky didn't get the job. I think we can agree on that as well. So we'll watch whoever they showing us today and we have no dog in the fight so root for whomever you will except I think you won't root for Philadelphia but you know, why not? He always root for the Lions. Listen, <laughs> let's go home. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day of praise and worship. And our prayer is that your Holy Spirit would fall upon us and wrap yourself around us. Give us peace that comes from you. Allow your face to shine upon us. 
Heavenly Father, bless us and keep us. Bring us safely back together again. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.